Hey there everyone, it's JC, welcome back. For May 2020, Altenew has released the Paint of Flower Anemone. Don't ask me how many times I tried to say that. <laughs> and I'm going to use my favorite Altenew 36 watercolor pan set to watercolor this card today. If you're unfamiliar with the monthly subscription that Altenew offers, I have a link down in the description box all about it. But right now, I'm going to jump right into the card making tutorial. First, I've already stretched and stapled my watercolor panel onto my painting surface. This is a quarter panel of the 9 by 12 inch watercolor paper from Altenew, so a final dimension of 4.5 by 6 inches. I want a full edge to edge watercolor piece and I lose a small margin when stretching the smaller A2 loose panels, so that's why I'm using the larger pad today. On a scrap piece of typing paper cut to A2, I've planned the layout of the large anemone cluster. And this isn't final by any means, I just wanted to get the spacing right for a floral cluster surrounding one of the short and sweet sentiments included with the paint of flower. Now that I have a rough idea of the layout, I'll use Ranger Distress Ink and Antique Linen and a large acrylic block to stamp the image onto my stretched watercolor paper. I'm going to speed this part up and talk about the watercolor techniques and overall inspiration of this card design. When googling anemones, the images that stuck with me were the white flowers with this sort of deep wine centers and black stamens and pistols. These images also reminded me of these high contrast blooms against a dark, almost black background. I saw them more in home decor murals or wallpaper, and I thought they were the perfect backdrop and inspiration for this very dark card. So that's what I'm painting today. Nothing is exact, and I'm trying not to spend so much time outlining every detail of the petal. I want a sort of washed out or overexposed white flower with little hints of wine in the center. I did the same with the leaves. I mixed variations of evergreen and rubellite to achieve a warm gray green that complemented the flowers. If I needed more depth or shadow in leaves that overlap each other, sometimes I would add espresso to the warm green mix. And speaking of color mixes, the flower centers are variations of grapevine with a touch of moon rock. As for the little flower buds, I think I only used moon rock to add shadows. So I'm going to keep painting this image, I'll throw on some music, and talk to you all at the next step after watercoloring.
Alright, so after about two and a half hours of painting the two anemone clusters, I'm going to let this fully dry before moving on to the next step. I'm leaving the watercolor paper stretched and stapled to my painting easel. Then I'm taking this Altenew watercolor brush marker in jet black to fill in all the white negative space around the flowers and leaves. The reason I used the jet black watercolor brush marker instead of the jet black in the watercolor pan set is because the marker pigment load is very intense. And you'll see I'll get a full coverage matte black with one layer and it's also uniform, so I have no color variation throughout the entire panel. The brush point on the marker is also very fine, so I'll get right up against corners of the leaves without accidentally losing the outline detail of the flowers, leaves, and stems. When it's all done, it will look like I watercolored on top of black cardstock. If there are any spots you colored that you're not a fan of, just cover it with the jet black watercolor marker. Right-handed or lefty, just make sure you're watching where the side of your hand rests so you don't accidentally smear the black pigment to your flowers. Using a micron fine-tipped pen, I'll draw in the stamens and pistil to the open blooms. Nothing exact here either, I'm drawing a series of dots and lines just like the original stamp image. Of course, no card of mine is complete without some splatters. I'll use Altenew Pure White Ink Spray to add some splatters all around the card, and I've made a quick mask with some scrap paper in the center of the card. This is where I anticipate my sentiment going. I'll let that fully dry before cutting out the watercolor panel with a craft knife and a ruler. I'm trying to conserve as much of the panel as I can, so I'm going right up against the staples and tape so that I can get more than I need to cover an A2 card size. I'm going to center the sentiment between the two flower clusters and white heat emboss it using Altenew Pure White Embossing Powder. It is at this point I have trimmed down my panel to A2, making sure that the sentiment truly lies in the center of the watercolor painting. I'm centering this 2 and 3 fourths by 4 inch template on top of the watercolor panel so I can cut it out with my ruler and craft knife. With these two portions, I'll glue down the frame portion directly on my note card base. With the centerpiece, I'll cut a mat slightly larger. I just estimated it and foam mounted it in the center of my card where it was originally. And that's it for this dark watercolor card. Honestly, this card turned into one of my favorites for its seductive imagery and darker palette. If you like this video, let me know by leaving a comment. I have all the materials I used in the description box below. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all very soon and have the best day.